Hey, what's up YouTube? Today we are going to learn how you can create server actions in the best way possible. And as of this recording, there's a new library out there called ZSA, and this helps you build type safe server actions. And once you guys see how I create these server actions and you learn how to do it, I can almost guarantee you're never gonna go back to how you used to do server actions in the past. So before you get started, if you can hit that like button and then also subscribe for more content just like this, that would be greatly appreciated. But other than that, let's jump into it. Okay, so now I jumped over to the documentation for this awesome library, and that is at zsa.forcell.app. And ZSA actually stands for Zod Server Actions, hence, the reason why is because we're validating using Zod, the library. So if you're very familiar with using React and any front-end frameworks, you've probably used Zod for type safety. And also to the documentation highlights three main features that they want to go over that we're quickly going to go over as well. And that is you could obviously validate both inputs and outputs with Zod. You can also use something called procedures, which is essentially like middleware. And this allows you to pass in values and context to your server action. So it's essentially a middleware, like if you use Node.js, that's how it's gonna be used in your code as well. And the third main feature that they wanna highlight is the integration of React Query. So you could query server actions in client components. And to get started, all you have to do is install ZSA. And you can do this by using any package manager. And as you can see, there's the command right here inside of my screen. Okay, so first off, we're just gonna go over creating your first server action. And one of the great things I like about this library is the documentation is very easy to read and also easy to understand. So definitely recommend checking them out. I will link it in the description below as well. So you could go over that, but we're gonna go over the example that I have inside of my development server. So I have a Next.js application and I'm gonna show you how the front end looks first and then we'll go over the server action. So on the front end, on localhost 3000, I have a pretty much a contact form that has a name, right? Input, an email input, a message, and then a submit button. And all this does is it's gonna send a message to our database using Prism, which is an ORM, and also MongoDB to our database. And like I said, we're using Next.js and obviously with server actions. Okay, so now let's go look inside of the code. I am using VS Code as the code editor, and like I said, Next.js with TypeScript. And what we are in is I'm inside the actions folder in a file called actions.ts, and this is our server component. And the first thing we are doing is we are creating a server action with create server action, and then we're invoking it. And this is coming from the ZSA package. As you can see here, I'm importing it from there at the top. Next, we're going to set the input and the input allows us to create a Zod schema for whatever we're receiving from the client or the front end, right? So what we're receiving inside of that form is gonna be a name, an email, and a message. And as you can see, I define the types here, or you could define them in a different file and make this code less of lines. You could do that as well, but I'm just defining it here for the tutorial's sake. And then we have a handler, right? And the handler pretty much is a handler function for the action. This is where all of your logic is going to be. And pretty much before the input actually gets received as a param inside the handler, it's already validated due to the dot input where we're validating it there. So there's no need to worry if your data is pretty much in the right type or not. And so as you can see here, we're just doing our logic. And what we're doing is I'm creating a message using one of my schemas called message and we're just passing in the name email message to our database and then console logging and then returning a success equals true okay so that is how to create a basic server action right there now i want to show you the client side on where we're actually calling this server action so i just did it on the home page which is localhost 3000 right and what we are using is we're using Shad CN components to style the UI, which you saw a few minutes ago. And I used v0.dev to actually just create that styling for me. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to use the use server action hook, okay? And the reason why we're using the use server action hook is if I go back to the actual documentation, right? 
there's two ways you could call it from the client. You First off, you could call it just directly as a server action from the client. You could call it from an on click and then just call it here like this, exactly how it's supposed to be. Or you can actually use the use server action hook and this is gonna make your life a lot easier. The reason why is because it pretty, has, pretty much has built-in loading states, which allow us to show pretty much if the operation is pending or not, and it just is easily able to handle asynchronous operations. So here's an example in the documentation, but we're using the use server action hook. So let's go back to our code. And to use the use server action hook, you must import it from zsa-react. And we are calling it inside of our function, which I just have called home. And this takes in a few different options we could pass as an object. We have the is pending, execute, data, reset. And then if you do a comma, then you press control space, you can see other values that we could pass in as well. But these are the four main important ones you kind of want to go over. Is pending lets you pretty much handle the loading state. Execute is executing or calling the server action, right? Data is the data that we receive back and reset is going to essentially revalidate the data and reset the um, local host. So what we have here is we have the card and then we have a form, right? An HTML form and I have an on submit that is just calling a function called on submit. And another important thing here is we are passing in form data, right? So to get form data, we must have the name attribute on your inputs and text areas. So don't forget about that. So as you can see, I have name equals name, name equals email, and then name equals message, right? And then we have a button with the type of submit. So the on submit function is here at the top. It's gonna to be an asynchronous function. We are preventing the page from reloading. Then we are getting the form data and then storing each individual value inside of a variable called name, email, and message. Then we're doing a quick check to see if it's there or not. And if it's not, we are returning. That's all I'm doing. And then now this is where we use the use server action. So we're using the execute function, right? And what we do is pretty much we get two options returned to us when it comes to server actions using the ZSA package. It could either be an array that includes the data or error, or it can be, let me look at the documentation real quick. It could be a data that includes that, or it is going to be a null or error. So it's either gonna be an array that's data or error or null of error, okay? So those are your two options that you're gonna receive back from calling this execute function. And what we're doing is I'm just passing the front end values that we want to our server action by storing it in a object, right? And then if we get an error, I'm console logging and then sending a toast error. And then if we do get the data, I'm console logging the data, we're setting a success message and we are resetting it as well, revalidating. So that is how to create a basic server action. Now let's see if this is actually gonna work, right? So let's go back, let's create just Brett. Then we're gonna have brett11 at gmail.com. Now I'm gonna put a hi there. How can I help? Or hi there, I need some help. So we're gonna click send message. And at the bottom right where I'm covering, you can see I, we get a success message. I'm moving myself real quick. And if we look at the code and we open up our server terminal, we do get consoles. We have a 200 status on that post request. And we have the data that was sent to MongoDB, which created a new document inside of our database. So that is creating a basic server action using ZSA. Now let's jump into how to use procedures. Okay, so jumping back into the docs, if we go to the procedures tab here on the left of the scroll bar, procedures allow you to di add additional context to a set of server actions, such as a user ID of the caller. They're useful for ensuring certain actions can be only called if specific commissions are met, like the user being logged in or having certain permissions. So like I said, procedures are just server actions that act like middleware for your other server actions. 
And the cool thing about procedures is you could actually chain a bunch of procedures together, which I'm gonna go over here in a second. But if we go back, I don't wanna go too advanced real quick, is procedures, creating a basic one that you're probably gonna use a lot is ensuring if the user is logged in or not, or if the user is a paying member, stuff like that, that is a great use case for using a procedure, right? A server action procedure. And to use a procedure, you must import the create server action procedure from ZSA. So we're creating a server action procedure, not a create server action. So there is a difference, right? We have to import. And as you can see, it shows in the docs right here. And for this example, it's seeing if the user is authenticated by calling the function auth procedure. And then what's doing is it's getting the user through this function, get user, it's returning the email and ID, and then all it's doing is returning it here, email and ID, and then if not, it's catching an error, throwing an error saying the user's not authenticated. So after you create your server action that's a procedure, okay, you can chain that procedure onto your actual server action. So below, as you can see, it says update email, right? So we have an update email function, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain the auth procedure that we just created right here, on to the new server action we're creating. So we get to do dot create server action. So that's creating a server action, right? And now we go over the input, validating the input, and then we're calling in the handler function to pretty much code our logic inside of the handler function. And the cool part is it takes in context. So the context is what we are getting from the return of the auth procedure. So we're getting the user.email and then user.id, okay? and we're passing it in as CTX, which stands for context, and we're also passing in the input, which we're getting here, which is the new email. And then what we're doing is we are just destructuring the user from the context, and then we are just making a query to our database to update the new email, and then we are just returning the new input dot email to our client side. So that is the code example for a procedure inside of the documentation. And like I said, you could actually chain procedures together. So we have another function called isAdminProcedure, right? And this is creating a server action procedure. And then we could pass in the auth procedure. So we're chaining the auth procedure to the isAdminProcedure. So now we have two procedures chained together. And every time you chain a procedure onto another, the way you get those values from that specific procedure is by passing in the context. I know I'm saying procedure a lot, I feel like I am, so if you guys have any questions or I'm confusing you a lot, leave a comment down below and I would be happy to answer them. But let's continue. Um, and as you can see, this function is just checking to see if the role is an admin or not by chaining these two procedures together. And then we can just call this is admin procedure on the delete user and then we get the context from both procedures here, the auth procedure and the admin procedure inside of the delete user server action. So I wanna show you an example that we are working on, on the code I am doing right now. And what we are having here is we have a actions folder and then I have a procedures.ts and we created authenticated procedure function, which is creating the server action procedure. And then we don't have any inputs, so you don't have to have a dot input, so we just have a dot handler. It's not taking in anything as the argument or the prop, and all we're doing is we're getting the current user, and then we are returning the user.isd, the user.email, and the user.credits, and then I also have a paid procedure, okay? And all that's doing is pretty much chaining the authenticated procedure, like you can see here, on to the paid procedure, and to get the values from the authenticated procedure, we are getting them from the context. And if I hover over them, you can see we're getting a user.id, .email, and .credits. Okay, so that's chaining the procedures together. And now we want to use these procedures as middleware on our actual server actions. So now I'm on this server action page where we have a bunch of server actions. And as you can see here on line 94, um, we have a server action called search generated content, and we are using a middleware procedure, pretty much a procedure called authenticated procedure, and then we're creating the server action, getting the inputs from the front end, 
and then calling the handler function while taking in the context and the input values. And then we have all of our logic here and then we're returning the text. So those are the two main things you want to know when using the ZSA library while creating your server actions. And maybe it sounds confusing now, but when you start getting the hang of it, like I said, I could guarantee you guys are not going back to the way of creating server actions. And every time you create a server action, you're gonna to wanna to use this library. And I'm just going over the basics. I will probably make a more in-depth video of more features that ZSA has. But for example, um, you can actually validate the, not just the inputs, like I said, but you could also validate the outputs by saying dot output. Let me just make this a little bigger. So you see we validate the inputs, but you could also validate the outputs as well, which is pretty cool. And you could just go over the documentation as well. And then another thing which they don't recommend, they try to avoid it because it does cost more because you're making a request to your database every time, is you can actually have dynamic output schemas and you can also have dynamic input schemas. And like I said, obviously it could be different data being requested to the database every time. So this could cost more if you have a bigger scale application. So it's not recommended, but if you can, there's always an option to do dynamic inputs and outputs uh, type safeties. And then you also have callbacks, right? So the available callbacks, which is very important, we actually use it in our code as well, is the following callbacks can be configured when defining your server action or procedure level to be shared among a set of actions. So you can have an on start, an on success, an on complete, an on error, and on input parse. So if any of these actions happen, you can call a function when these actions happen. So if there's an on success, like the server action became successful, then you can run a function, maybe send a toast message to the user. You can do a bunch of different things. The on error, obviously send an error message, but there's callbacks available to you to run additional logic based on the life cycle of your server action, right? Then you also have timeouts, which is just to set a timeout on an individual action, use the timeout method. So in this example, the hello world action takes more than one second to complete, it will throw an error. So obviously it's protecting your action if it takes a certain amount of time, say five seconds, and you wanna timeout the function, you can do that as well. And then it also has something called retries, which I really haven't looked into, but I'm assuming it just retries the action however many times you define it to be. And then also one of the big key things is you can use React Query inside of the client side to actually call your server actions. So that is another useful thing. And like I said, that's a little more advanced, but the two main things you wanna pretty much take away from this video is creating server actions and also using procedures and how to do that properly and to make your code cleaner and better in the long run. So hopefully you guys like this video. And like I said, leave a comment if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. But other than that, hope you guys liked it. And if you did, hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this because I am going to be coming out with a bunch more videos in regards to Next.js or React or TypeScript. But like I said, thank you guys again for sticking around to the end of the video and hope you guys have a great day.